This simulation gets at a very important idea in physics. That is, what happens when an object is moving in one direction, but accelerating in another? Let's start with a really light rocket with a really big engine. This means we'll set the rocket mass to 0.2 kilograms, the rocket burn time to 1.5 seconds, and the rocket thrust to 10 newtons. That way the rocket will accelerate very quickly upward and for a long time. As you can see, the acceleration of the rocket was very high. We can determine the acceleration in two ways. First, let's look at the slope of the velocity versus time graph. The rocket accelerates from zero speed to a speed of a little over 60 meters per second over 1.5 seconds. This means each second it gained a bit over 40 meters per second of speed. So its acceleration was something like 40 meters per second per second, or 40 meters per second squared. That's four times the acceleration due to gravity you have when you fall down. So we sometimes say the rocket experienced four Gs. Anyway, it's a lot of acceleration. The second way we can determine the acceleration is to use Newton's second law. The rocket is producing an upward force of 10 newtons. Gravity is producing a downward force of two newtons. This means that the net upward force was eight newtons. If you divide this net force by the mass, 0.2 kilograms, you get an acceleration of again, roughly 40 meters per second squared. So everything checks out. At t equals 1.5 seconds, the rocket shut off. However, as you can see, the velocity was still positive. The rocket was still moving upward. At this point in time, only the force of gravity is acting, and that generates a downward acceleration of 10 meters per second squared. This downward acceleration is about a quarter of the previous upward acceleration, so the slope looks more gentle. The rocket continues moving upward until its velocity finally reaches zero. Can we predict how long it will take to reach zero velocity? Well, we know it took 1.5 seconds to get to maximum speed. Then, thanks to gravity, it went from 60 meters per second to zero with an acceleration of negative 9.8 meters per second squared. This should take then a little over six seconds. So the total flight time was roughly eight seconds. The graph at the right shows the position of the rocket over time. Initially, for the first 1.5 seconds, you can see the position graph is curved and concave up. This is because the velocity is increasing, and the velocity can be represented as the slope of a position versus time graph. After 1.5 seconds, only gravity is acting, and the rocket is slowing down. This means the graph is again curved, but this time concave down. There are a lot of things you can play around with in this simulation. For instance, what do you think will happen if you try to launch the rocket with too little thrust and a lot of weight? Play around and see what you can discover.